Anyway, here we go. I love the toe shape, I love the open toes, I love the network, and all the people know. I love the Bitcoin, and I remember big boom me out of boom me out of boom me out of boom me out of I love the freedom, I love the name of love. I love to trade things, I like to speculate, I love to hold that, and all of you who pay to put me out of put me out of put me out of put me out of I love to netting, cause my daughter knows, I love photography, I love when blocks are down, I love the forum, it's such a brilliant place to put me out of 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 What are you doing here? Uh, I'm, we're at the Bitcoin Hackathon in Berlin and uh, we developed a merchant solution which we're hopefully going to present in a bit and uh, very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Can you show it to the camera? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so we call it Accept Bit and um, basically if you want to accept a payment you can uh, enter the amount and it'll generate a QR code for you. And then you can scan it with your phone. I'm gonna just use a uh, blockchain info. Um, scan the QR code, and then send the payment. And because um, blockchain info takes a while, so it's just signing the inputs right now. And um, basically, the idea is that it integrates with Electrum. So as a merchant, you have your Electrum wallet at home and it has all the private keys, but you export your master public key and you put it into this website. So all this website knows is your public key, so it can't actually access any of your money. So if a server get, get hack, gets hacked, it doesn't matter. And then once the payment is through, it automatically updates here, uh, and you can see it here. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Andreas, maybe we should uh, begin the demonst demonstrations. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so uh, I'll just talk about what this, this is the Bitcoin ha a Bitcoin hackathon we organized in Berlin and people have come all the way from Switzerland, from Austria, from, uh, from well we have Greek people here and we have Germans and we spent an entire weekend of people doing economic work to try and cr come up with cool uh, interesting Bitcoin projects and we have there is a huge variety of very interesting projects now. Uh, this is for offline transactions, so um, if the buyer has no internet access but the seller does, the buyer can send the transaction via Bluetooth to the seller who will then broadcast it and ensure that it's valid. And the checking that it's valid is the part that I'm doing now. Okay. And they, they're like, the guy who owns it is really passionate about Bitcoin, we hold our Bitcoin meetings there. And uh, one of the things is they accept Bitcoin as payments and we've stuck, we've, as we've been there we've been seeing a lot of problems involved with people accepting uh, Bitcoin payments, we started to think like, oh, how, how can we solve these problems? And mostly it's like small things, like, oh, the interface needs to be changed in this way. Then there's other things like, oh, he's worried about chargebacks and, pri and what is the prices of items and stuff. So uh, I've actually done quite a few smaller projects, so I'm just going to go through them and explain some of my thoughts. This is the first thing I made, which is uh, he can put the prices of the items with euros, and then it fetches the Bitcoin exchange rate of, of the exchanges and it does the conversion. It updates it in real time. So you can have this running on the wall on a tablet and people always know the prices in Bitcoin and they won't have to use the calculators. The other thing is uh, uh So this project was a like Bitcoin regulator, right? Yes. Um, uh, but then another thing that they've got a problem with is uh, uh, when, uh, like when you send a Bitcoin payment, it typically takes you know anything from ten minutes to an hour until you know you've received the payment, and you can't really be sitting in a bar, you know, paying and sitting there like oh, ten minutes till I get my drink, you know, twenty minutes, oh. Bing. So, uh, so they just say, oh, you know, we're not worried. We just accept the payments, you know, like without any confirmations. Except for someone like me, I can I can rob the bank. <laughs> it's just so easy for me to like, to if someone's not accepting any confirmations to to take to get things for free. So, one scheme I came up with was to 
uh, when you make a transaction, it goes into the Bitcoin network and it it spreads around until and people hold it until uh, a new block comes along and it gets into the block. Uh, what you can do is, if someone's accepting unconfirmed transactions, you can substantially lower the risk by uh, say by holding the transaction for for some length of time and then checking if there are any attempts by people uh, trying to make a fraudulent transaction. Now, after 10 seconds, you know that if you've broadcasted your transaction properly, it will be dispersed throughout the whole network and people are gonna reject any double spends. And also after that time, if you don't get any double spends back, you can be pretty confident that that is the transaction that's gonna make it into the network. So, uh, we just have a example here. So, you just start this tool and you have it running. And it's a bit basic right now. <laughs> so just waiting for it to. So it's connecting to lots of Bitcoin nodes. And uh, and then I put that in there. And if after 10 seconds there the program does not exit without an error, then I know that there's been no double spend attempts for that transaction that nobody else has tried to spend the same inputs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, like it could be a lot better looking the program, whatever, more integrated, but that's so that program. You call this a double spend monitor. Right. Can you illustrate a double spend? <laughs> <laughs> I, I did make one, but I, I lost the Whatever. Like <laughs> <laughs> another thing I made also was uh, so the winner here is going to get something very special indeed. Indeed, they're going to be able to embed uh, a message of their choice into the blockchain. So I'll just take this and I. Uh, So you see, someone can embed uh, a 20 byte message of their choosing into the blockchain. Mm -hmm. This time I put dead beef 000 boobies 000 food bar bar. <laughs> <laughs> so some lucky person is going to win that prize. Uh, then, then, I, then I was like, okay, it's Saturday, what else can I work on? <laughs> so I, uh, I, I started making, I came up with this cool idea for a game, and uh, it was going to be a two-player game, where you, alright, you can't see the other window, but it's like, let me see if I can, and so you can place your army, and it costs real bitcoins, <laughs> and like two people could be playing over the network. And then we could have like a little war between both sides. And uh, the the thing is with this game is uh, uh, the way the way it works is uh, you have a total balance at the top, and each one of these units has a cost associated with it. You like let's say you see at the moment I can change the price of the unit and. Uh, by placing it here, you see it says 3.4. That is the relative strength of the unit. And when another unit attacks it, its price goes down. And so what that means is that, uh, unlike in, in, in a normal strategy game like Command and Conquer, I try and, the first thing I do is seize the entire map, try and get all the resources, and just go into production overdrive and tank crush the enemy and crush them. In this type of game, it's, it's the inverse. You have a limited number of resources, and you've got to try and uh, use your resources in the most efficient way possible while trying to extract as much resources from your opponent. 
And um, one of the things that isn't seen in this demo that I also wanted to put is that certain points in the environment will have uh, streams or, or places where those streams intersect, where if the player is there, they get a range multiplier, multiplier or a strength multiplier. And so what that means is that uh, there is an advantage uh, by seizing certain strategic points on the map and then holding those strategic points on the map. And so what a person can't do is they can't just go and uh, rush you up front and spam you with money because they, they will lose. And there is no end to the game. The game continues as long as, as, long as you have uh, you, what you get. You're not bored or you're not bankrupt. And so I think this, this is an example of how Bitcoins can change video games because of their frictionless properties and because of uh, just because of uh, how they interact with online space and you know, lack of charge bags. It's not something that's really been explored in video games yet. Uh, okay, so now the last. So then I, I changed my mind today actually, and I decided to make something different. So. So wait, is it was it a self project today? Yeah, this is the demo. So anyone who paid money. No, what what should I write on the board? So this was Bitcoin game. This was your. Oh yeah, this is the last one. Yeah, that was Bitcoin the previous one. Bitcoin mages. 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 Yeah, but you, you paid money, so you want to be in the demo, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually didn't pay, but... Uh. <laughs> right. so, someone Andres. who has the game can play my money, because I put money, but I didn't yeah, get so the game. Play. <laughs> so, uh, didn't did you... <laughs> but, so but you play for me, yeah, 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 you can have half the yeah, 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 winning yeah, 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 if you win. Otherwise, I would just do... So uh, in the source code is an IP address. Can everyone just check that the IP address is the same as the one in the source code? Andreas. Andreas? Yeah, I'm trying to run it. How old can I call it? Key game? Pi game. Can you look similar? Huh? D, D. Can you write it on, yeah. on your, on your console? The command on your console? Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. If, if, is everyone make sure the IP address is the same? It's the same. It's the same, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, what you need to play the game is oh, the type. Yeah. yeah, Python controller.py. Uh, then uh, then choose a username of your choice. So I'm going to say like, just move for example. I won't it's going to conflict with mine. Yeah, no, I'm not going to <laughs> move to so do you. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> put a Bitcoin address. So like one, this would be your address for the reward. And then... Uh, Maybe it's not a bad one. Uh, just put one ABC mm -hmm. and I'll sort it out after. <laughs> but this is what this means. Um, you say this is where it goes with this. To you. It's but if I don't have one, I don't. it doesn't matter, just put one ABC. So that's why I'm asking then what is where this? It'll show on the screen way. like pay to one ABC and we all know what's in the yeah. So it's not like it's wired online. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, uh, so um, the Bitcoin address doesn't matter, it's, it's, it's tough to identify there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So this leads to the Bitcoin, so let's say the port or how is how it's No, no, we're going to set it up manually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the money is sent manually after one, so you want to tell me to where. No, but if you send the money so manually to this ABC, so it probably will not be a Yeah, we well, obviously we are not stupid, so we'll look at, oh, it's one ABC, so then we'll ask you. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> and then put your team, which is left or right, choose one team. Uh, Rico, raise your hand. Who's going to be team left? Uh, I think we need more left. Oh, left. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm okay, I'm on team left. <laughs> yeah, so one, two, three, three, four people on team left. Who's on team right? Two. Uh, you should be on team team right. So that's three and three. So that's six pe people. I think. Okay. Uh, everyone, get the command ready, but don't press enter until I say it. Okay. You <laughs> type this properly. <laughs> and we like the two senses. Huh? Can we add two? No. <laughs> 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 
like World of Warcraft. No, for the for the two real pens a month for me, not for me, because there's no. You need one keyboard, so. Instructions you open up the, the window. Okay, I'll, I'll explain the game. Uh, you have you have a pot in the middle, and uh, and to move the pad the paddle for your team, uh, it costs a certain amount of bitcoins to move it. Um. But that money that you put goes into the pot, oh. and then at the end. The, the winning team gets the pot distributed to them according to how much the person put in the pot. So if you were someone who contributed a lot to moving the paddle, you get a lot of the reward. But well, how does the program know how much Bitcoin I put into Because it will show it, like... Hmm? It will show it. You'll see it become clear. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't run it. Are you, you, you ready? Yeah. yeah. All right, everybody ready? Yeah. yeah. Yes? yes? Yes. All right. When I say now, uh, oh. ready? Yeah, oh. Steady. All right. Wait. Now. Yes. <laughs> cool. <laughs> new match. Will it go to the left or to oh. the right? It used to be new match. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Make some more coins. That means you're going to lose a lot. Yeah. <laughs> transaction uh, enable lots of new uh, possibilities what you can do with Bitcoin. So right now, if you uh, send money, you send it to one specific person that has to have the private key. And if he doesn't have the key, uh, he's unable to send the money, obviously. So, uh, and but, uh, and but multi-signature is, is you send the money to a special uh, combined, uh, let's say, address, uh, which is um, uh, which consists of up to three uh, uh, private and public keys and then you can specify in your transaction that if there is uh, th there is at least uh, one, two or three uh, of them uh, willing to sign that transaction that you generate then the money can get uh, sent further. So, so this is 
system exists in the current Bitcoin? Network? Yes, so the, 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 the core uh, Bitcoin client, this, uh, Bitcoin QT, has this already implemented, but not on the user interface side, I guess. Uh, it's only in the in the daemon, so at, at the command line, and in the code. So the miners are already processing this. The, the, the Bitcoin network is already capable of uh, tra uh, spreading these transactions, but uh, the user currently has no method of accessing it. And so what we try to do is bring this uh, to the uh, Bitcoin JVault, so that the, the Bitcoin wallet for Android and other applications will have the possibility to, to use this tool to, uh, yeah, to, to enable many new uh, exciting uh, use cases. For example, what, what you can do is have a service on the net, which is, uh, what Gatscoin came up with this uh, great idea, uh, the, the, the service on the net gets one private key, which you also have, and you have a second private key, so there are two private keys, which you, both, you have both, and the service on the net has just one, and uh, the service on the net gets a uh, kind of password or pin. Ah, I got it up. Uh, so this is Pascal. You can come right here. I, I'm presenting our, our, our stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah. And the basic idea is that the, the service on the net assigns the transaction if you are able to supply a pin or a, a pattern on the screen on a tablet or or, or mobile phone, then. Um, then it will send the transaction for you. So if your mobile phone gets stolen and your bitcoins are on the mobile phone, um, a thief cannot uh, spend those funds except he has um, the pattern as well. So that's great. And what we did is uh, lay some uh, basic groundwork uh, to, to enable this. So we had a long list of tasks uh, <laughs> which we are unfortunately not able to complete fully, but we wrote some unit tests uh, which are uh, which uh, we use for um, testing if the Bitcoin J actually is capable of uh, sending and receiving uh, the coins from a multi-signature transaction and we did also some uh, work that the Bitcoin J um, can uh, understand uh, the semantic of a transaction when it comes to the network so uh, when it receives it from the network yeah so um, yeah, but that's uh, that's a basic thing. So it's lots of code. Uh, the unit tests are mostly not working, but that's the way uh, test driven development works. So you get the unit tests not running, and uh, then when uh, somebody is very smart, comes in and uh, completes the code on the production code, then the unit tests start working. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the that's the basic idea. So we did also uh, some. Uh, I can show you uh, the the basic concept. Uh, uh, in the wiki also maybe there at the this address so uh, so in uh, this is the, the the Bitcoin stack language that's used internally in the transactions in the binary data and this is explained here and. Uh, there is the there there is the, these two this this opcode so you check multisig. Uh, this is uh, uh, one of the one of the bytes in the message uh, is this uh, check multisig, and so uh, we are passing the message. So I'm I'm trying to run the test case, and I think it will not complete because it's uh, actually in, in the full. In the full uh, spectrum, it's a quite complicated topic, and it will probably um, be lots of work uh, following this uh, this kickoff. So and yeah, right now it uh, just doesn't work. So well, uh, for a hackathon, it uh, for me at least it was maybe a bit of too big of a project. Maybe <laughs> we should have done something simpler, but uh, yeah, if we don't do it, maybe nobody will. So we can't leave this world without having multi-signature transactions, can we? The idea is that um, the phone requesting the money will uh, determine its Bluetooth MAC address and put that into the Bitcoin URI um, the QR code the, uh, yeah, the QR code and also on the NFC tag on the, on the back of the phone and if you, if you connect that um, 
you will, yeah, you, you, uh, uh, a Bluetooth connection is established between the, these two phones and at the moment you sign the transaction, the, you know, the transaction sender signs the transaction, it's uh, also delivered via Bluetooth. It's delivered to the network but also to via Bluetooth. And so you have a direct connection between the, the two phones. And yeah, uh, the, 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 the receiving phone can, uh, will also publish that, that to the network, to the peer-to-peer -peer network. So the sender doesn't need any internet. Uh, I have a question. Can, can this also work with, with an NFC? Yes. In fact, yeah, that would have yeah, been a better than the QR code. Uh, because for, uh, okay, for me, anyway, NFC makes more sense than Bluetooth, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah the, problem, ah, the problem is that NFC is only for, for about that much distance. So as soon as you take away your phone to... Uh, this, this one is good. So as long as you take a radio phone, uh, the connection will be dropped, and I cannot. I mean, when I press, when I when I check the transaction, yeah, press send, the I don't want it in, in this. Uh, yeah, can you can you this can you work? Because uh, so this should work, right? Actually, they're both the same things. Um, um, you have to press on the screen for. for it. Okay, now I got a uh, uh, trans uh, oh, yes. again the request, but yeah, the problem is I have no no money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but at that point, if the thing is now the phones are separated, right? But he still has to confirm. So now if he confirms and he has no internet access, he comes to my phone. And my phone will be paid. So if we are if he's abroad, then he can still pay without internet access, which is the point. If it was NF, if all the NFC would have to touch once again after you confirm, which can be done. It's, uh, it's a bit of a pain. Actually, what already is implemented, that you you can uh, open it. Uh, I mean, it was implemented even for the hackathon. Uh, you can scan a second QR code just with the transaction in it. Ah, okay. That's already implemented in code. And you can also use NFC for that, actually. It's all right. But right. you have to touch again. Yes. Are there any other projects? Mike, yeah. do you have something? Uh, well, I've been, I've been working on all of these projects. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you sorry. may give applause. Uh, I've been helping out with the... YouTube is an absolute bastard to work with, I will say that. But, um, so I also, I did some improvements to Bitcoin Day as well. So uh, previously, you had to, the user of the library had to save the wallet at the right times, and you were responsible for saving the wallet, which is a little bit unsafe, it's easy to forget, and it's, not necessarily kind of atomically, in some ways, some developers forgot to like do the atomic meaning things. So um, that's now taken care of in the background. And there's some performance improvements as well. So there's like a background thread that will also save the wallet when it changes. So if the wallet changes tons and tons really fast, you don't, you don't die because you hit this so much. Bitcoin community, for those who don't know what Bitcoin is, you should really go check it out.